Hi there, I'm Jacqueline Ferrero, and we go around the world searching out wild and scarce wines and olive oils that allow our US customers and businesses to experience and travel vicariously to many different places around the world. And some of these regions are not usually on your average tourist path. We think that it is so fun and important to explore with an open mind regions of different countries and the culture and wines that come from those places. This means looking outside your usual attraction cities or regions and heading down into the countryside and along the unbeaten paths. Great places to start hunting for these authentic travel experiences and those undiscovered areas are along modern borders. Because you see, especially in Europe of all places, so many borders were drawn relatively recently in history. And more often than not, they're politically motivated rather than culturally drawn. Throughout history, we'll see that the areas passed from one political allegiance or country to another. This impacts the look and feel of a place and therefore also the traditions of the area that surround the wine and food of the area. These border regions often are a blend of cultures with the language, food, wine, architecture, personalities, and habits of the people showing hallmarks of both nearby regions morphing into a separate unique culture that shows influences of both areas, making them fabulous places to experience multiple cultures and norms all through a unique lens that's in and of itself alone. Take for example the area of the North Adriatic, situated on the northern end of the Adriatic Sea, the sea that runs along the eastern end of the Italian peninsula. We find Italy, Slovenia, and Croatia all balled up. This area was not really politically defined as we know it until after the World Wars. This means that areas like Friuli Venezia Giulia in Italy, that's bordered by both Austria and Slovenia, has a very distinct culture from the rest of Italy, impacted by its neighbors. And in modern times, areas are also heavily influenced by pre-existing tourism. Local associations can advertise to foreign tourists more or less. They can push different types of tourism, luxury or outdoorsy. And oftentimes these, can, these decisions by them can be based on pre-existing branding images. And the tourists that this attracts has a large impact on the further economic development of the area. For example, in a country like Italy, whose GDP is heavily dependent on tourism, factors like this can weigh heavily on the quality and prices of products that are made locally based on whether or not these products are catering to a certain type of tourist. And heading back to the concept of branding of an area, this can get created over time. Yes, it's heavily influenced by local associations, but also by the history too. Areas where nobility once hung out can be seen as more prestigious. And even in modern times, these images can be shaped by a celebrity or fame. For example, look at Lake Como. While it was always a nice area, the arrival of stars such as George Clooney have pushed the area to a new level of opulence and higher prices. The trick of a traveler is to find those areas that are still authentic, and not catering too directly to tourists, even though we will admit places like Venice and Florence that are heavy handed towards tourism do have their own charm and wow factors as well. So it's time to break out of your usual routes, put on your travel hat and immerse yourself in different parts of the countries that are not well known, because those are the parts where there are microcosms of blended cultures to be found. And because that's also where you really find interesting, authentic local foods and wines that more often than not are top quality. Talking about quality, we often expect these further out regions to be cheaper or to black quality, but that's not the case, just the opposite, in fact. It takes a little bit of exploration to find the areas where these two things intersect, like in Friuli or in Alto Adige or the Basque country in Spain. As a thought experiment, we can consider Italian white wines. Often, as we've talked about in a previous video, Italian white wines can be viewed as cheap or lesser than compared to their red counterparts. But this just isn't the case, and Italy has to offer an interesting take on quality white wines, especially when you get into lesser known traveled regions. Complex, delicious white wines from Friuli, like from the winery Vigna Petrusa, might just be a catalyst to change your mind about the Italian white wine. Or perhaps try a Lugana from Zamichele that's located on the often overshadowed Lake Garda. Their Lugano wines are a great way to break into the Italian white wine scene, especially if you're a Chardonnay lover. And one can break away from the clutch that French wine has on the sparkling wine market with options made in the traditional method 
so in the Champagne method, like Dorello, Altalanga, and Boschera. They are all great alternatives to try a new, updated version of a classic, classic method wine. And they all tend to come off the beaten path and away from the crush of your traditional tourism. So are you ready to start exploring some lesser known regions in Italy and Europe, discovering some delicious new wines and foods along the way? Then you should sign up for our newsletter on verovino.com for the latest updates on new wines and great ideas for places to explore. And if you aren't yet planning a trip, a look-see at the Vero shop always has some fun and unique wines that will help you travel from the comfort of your home. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like below and subscribe for more content. I will see you with the next video, like this one here, about why we love Italian white wines. Bye.